Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Right, uh, so let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe any one of us can lead in prayer. Zeli. Father, we... Okay, go ahead, John. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray and submit this session into your mighty presence. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak to us. Help us to know more about you from your word. Anoint your servant, O oh God, that we would be able to um, know more about you and equip ourselves to be used for your kingdom, God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, John. All right. So what we did last week, uh, we looked at chapter 6, Jesus as our example. And, uh, you know, it was quite interesting to see that the way that Jesus himself thought, uh, he exemplified being a teacher, right? So we saw that uh, he characterized his teaching with wisdom. There was the supernatural. And also we saw that he used a lot of figure of speeches or, and parables, uh, parables, basically stories to bring a pro bring across the point that he was trying to uh, portray. He illustrated truths. Uh, he also at times obscured truths from people. And, uh, and so we looked at how through these manners, the Lord Jesus was, you know, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. He was able to, you know, in many places, when we read through the, the through the New Testament, they say, they call him rabbi, right? Rabbi means teacher, right? Uh, so he was a teacher. And uh, we saw that, you know, uh, uh, he, he was able to capture uh, the hearts of people, even in his teaching. Right, so the, if you look at the parables itself, and we looked at last week the example of uh, the parable of lostness, right? And in lostness, how he said, uh, you know, all the examples he used, it is such a powerful way of capturing their thoughts and their imaginations. And so, as teachers, each one of us, uh, and we look at you know uh, how we can grow in this, but each one of us must must develop this ability uh, to capture the the audience heart right uh, we must develop the ability to learn to teach in the right way right now it's not going to happen overnight right that's why we said uh, we must develop the ability right so we we continue to practice we continue to read right one of the things i always tell people uh, young folks is read because when you read, uh, you know, you have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of thoughts, you have, you get, you know, uh, uh, ideas on how to share. Uh, read books improves your vocabulary skills, it improves your uh, intonation, your rate of speech. All these things are practical, but they all matter, right? Imagine we've got good content, okay, uh, but we are just going on and on you know in the same tone right is is other hearers going to be excited definitely not right yeah. but the content is really good for example you're preaching a sermon on or you're teaching about the parable of the lost son you imagine you're saying okay there was two men and those two men were this way one ran away you know there's no there's no energy there's no rate of speech there's no intonation so all of these practical things are involved and i'm sure jesus had them because if if he was not a good teacher or if he was you know kind of boring nobody would have come and sat there right uh, wherever he went there were multitudes following him uh, so there was this passion there was this drive uh, and so uh, we must also develop that, right? Uh, whether we are a pastor, evangelist, whatever God has called us to be, bro, teaching is something we will get an opportunity to do, right? So let's move to chapter 7. And we look at, now, we saw that Jesus is the best example for, uh, for a teacher. Now, in the early church, what can we learn about uh, the ministry of teaching in the early church? Now, 
we do know that there were schools of ministry that had already been started in uh, you know during the time of the new testament right uh, during jesus's time you know uh, even uh, paul was studied under gamaliel so there was these there were schools that were formed or uh, where they would teach and the pharisees would spend a lot of time teaching and imparting and equipping people uh, so what happened to the ministry of teaching in the early church so let's look at a few examples and then we look at a couple of instructions uh, for us to follow as teachers right so uh, acts chapter 5 and verse 42 uh it's in your notes acts 5 and 42 maybe anybody else can read acts 13 and verse 1 as well so Yes, anyone can read Acts 5 and verse 42. Acts 5, 42. And daily in the temple and in, the, in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Right. So thank you, Zeddy. So what is happening here? Acts 5 is after the Pentecost, right? So after the Pentecost, uh, and then Peter, after Peter's sermon, thousands of people have been added into this church in Jerusalem. And what does it say there? Daily, they did not cease teaching the word of God, right? So they did see the supernatural, during the Pentecost, right? They saw the Holy Spirit come uh, like fire and be upon them and they were spoken tongues. And by the time Acts 5, the church was, you know, established, right? The, the church, okay, they knew, okay, there are so many people who believed in Jesus. Now, what do we do after that? What do, the, what do we do? The Holy Spirit has come, they're all baptized in the Holy Spirit. So what should they do? And they didn't. They didn't think about okay. Uh, you know, let's just meet every Sunday, or let's just you know, uh, let's do what we are doing. Continue to do. No, they said every day they met, and they did not cease. That means they did not stop teaching the word of God. And we see that in, even in the book of Acts, we go on later as well. We will see that teaching. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on teaching the Word of God because we know that, for example, if we are flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, we have the anointing, we have all of these wonderful things that the Holy Spirit bestows on us. But if we are not taught on how to use these gifts, right? Remember, Jesus taught with wisdom, right? So even as we are ministering to people, we need the wisdom of God to apply uh, you know the teaching that we receive or that or the teaching that we must receive right so i hope i'm i'm, I'm trying to get i'm trying to portray it the right way we may have a lot of gifts right a lot of gifts we may flow in the supernatural prophetic word of knowledge but if we are not taught about what the holy spirit is we can continue to flow on the gifts, but we lose the essence of who the Holy Spirit is. Right? Now, for example, right, uh, what is the first thing? Okay, let me open this question to you. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say Holy Spirit? And maybe a few of us can just, just answer. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you say Holy Spirit? Teacher. Teacher, okay. What else? God, okay. First thing, like don't think too much. Guide, okay. Nice. Our closest friend, okay. What else? What, what do you think? So I say Holy Spirit. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? The comforter. A comforter, okay. All right, that's all that's all right. Every everyone has said some wonderful things here. For me, right, personally. When I say when I when when I say these words Holy Spirit, I don't know why, 
but the first thing that comes to my mind is power right it's like power he's powerful and are there different aspects of the holy spirit yes there's you know he's a comforter he's a friend he's god he's right and and so if we are not taught on certain, certain things like see for example the holy spirit and he is a person now for many people he's just a force he's just a presence that lingers on right and he's maybe a, a something that just is there around only when we need help he comes right so we may be flowing in the anointing prophetic and all of those gifts but we may not know the person of the holy spirit he is a person this is what he has right now this is just an example right and that's why teaching is very important right we must teach in a way that people will understand and when they are walking in that grace gift that god has given they they understand okay this is who the holy spirit is and this is what i can do because of the holy spirit right what about when you know so for you know, there was this one time you know people come up and ask you know how come i've been praying for so many years but i have not got any gift of the holy spirit i've not i can't speak in tongues i've you know is it something wrong with me now what can we answer them we need to teach them we need to tell them hey it's nothing it's not about that the holy spirit is a person right uh, i remember this one time we were in north india and this young boy said you know, everyone in my church speak in tongues and you know they receive their healing i'm the only one i don't speak in tongues I, I i i don't feel confident then you know i remember we were a couple of us we were we were talking to him we were telling him see it's not about what you feel so we took open the scriptures and we said say greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so who is in you the holy spirit now the whole aspect of him manifesting his presence that will come on but who is inside you you have become a believer through the work of the holy spirit so we had to make him understand hey the holy spirit is inside you he is greater than anything in the world so no matter whether we speak in tongues whether we can prophesy whether there's working of miracles still you are powerful because greater is he that is in you now that does not mean that we don't pursue the gifts of the spirit we do but the moment we made him understand this he was probably 20 years old everything changed his mind right his identity came back to him. he said hey yeah no matter what i'm a child of god roman says through his spirit we call him abba father right and so we told we thought we told him right just a simple teaching 10 minutes he said uh, through the holy spirit that is in you you can call god abba father so we went back to the old testament so you see see in the old testament they could not call that because god was like this in the you know and we explained the whole thing we just told him very briefly but it just you know it just he he was able to understand it and so this teaching is very important we can know things out of just uh, you know because people have told or because we experience it but it's very important to really delve into what we are doing right now if i want to teach accounts or maths i need to really go and study it be really equipped in it and then be able to teach the moment i try to teach something i don't know it's like what jesus said it's the blind leading the blind we don't want that to happen right okay let's look at a couple of more verses acts 13 1 acts 13 1 then somebody else can open acts 15 35 and acts 18 11 so acts 13 1 Acts chapter 13 verse 1. 
In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Syrian, Manin, who had been brought up with the Herod and Terak and Saul. Yeah, thank you, Jivina. So now we see here, this is talking about the church in Antioch, Acts 13. So what happened in Jerusalem, people, believers started growing in Antioch. And now in Antioch, the church started thriving. There were leaders being grow, uh, you know, raised up there. There were prophets, there were evangelists, there were teachers, all of that. And there's a list, there's a couple of people there who were teaching in the church. Right. So here in the book of uh, in, in Acts 5 in Jerusalem, they did not cease teaching. In Antioch, there was the prophetic, there was the prophets, there were evangelists, all of that was happening, but they did not stop teaching as well. So basically, we can come to this conclusion that as a church or as a ministry and in whatever we are doing, even a life group, we must be able to teach the word of God, right? Because only the word can change people, right? Only the word can minister to people. Okay, I'll share this example, right? Uh, early 2018, when we went to uh, Mangalore as a family, uh, APC Mangalore, and uh, about maybe eight or 10 of us in church. And, you know, I tried so many things, so many things I tried, uh, you know, uh, and trying, trying, and many things worked, many things did not work. I remember this one time I was praying and I was saying, God bless the church. You bring the right people. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me, right? And it was like, it was just a simple voice, like a knowing inside. It was like, you preach the word of God. Right? Don't do anything else. Meaning don't talk all these unwanted things. Just preach and teach the word of God. Because when you teach, the people who are coming will understand. And they will know. And it... You know, I I remember there was a time uh, in in the in the church. I used to keep calling them. Are you coming to Sunday church? Are you coming? This you know Friday. I used to sit and call them. Are you coming to church? Please come to church. I hope you will be there. And all of these things, I used to get a headache. But I realized that hey, I don't have to do that now. I mean, it's important to you know invite them. But I realized that if I teach the word, if I'm equipping them they will come, right? I don't have to keep pressurizing them to come. They themselves will come. And eventually, it didn't happen overnight, but eventually what I started doing was just, you know, usually at church, we spend 40 minutes of the word. Uh, so we started extending it. So I, I, I would, you know, take a little more time on the word. So just go into details. I remember I used to go and uh, I had this commentary. So I would open up the commentary, look up the Hebrew, look up the Greek, just additional things and try to bring in these, you know, small nuggets of truth, right? Uh, like, for example, uh, you know, the word uh, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you will be my witnesses, right? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, you'll receive power, and you will be my witness. I remember a long time back uh, teaching, sharing this. And when I went up to the Greek to look at the word witness, it means martyr. Now the whole meaning changes. Right? In, in the Greek, it's martyr. You, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit to you'll receive power to be a martyr. For the sake of the gospel, the whole meaning changes. And then, you know, you bring out these small things, begin to teach the church. And eventually we saw the church people themselves said, why don't we have a Bible study? They only came up to me and said, why don't we have a Bible study? You know, 
I said, okay, we'll have a Bible study. So what am I trying to bring across? And the more we teach the word, the word will be able to impact people. But it's also important on how we teach it. Right? And we saw Jesus' example. He was able to capture the imagination of his audience, right? Uh, let's look at a couple of more verses. Uh, maybe Acts 18, 11. Let's look at what happened in Acts 18, 11. Yes, anybody can read Acts 18, 11. X 18, 11, and he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Mm. Teaching the word of God among them. So we see the emphasis they're teaching. Right, right. Acts 21, verse 21. Acts 21, 21. Acts chapter 21, verse 21. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. Yeah. So now the uh, you see here it says that the, these are the Pharisees and the uh, Sadducees who are saying, we have been informed that you people are teaching this whole new group called Christians that have come up, you people are teaching them, you know, but they mis misunderstood, right? They said, people are teaching them that we don't need to you know, obey the Old Testament, but there was teaching involved, right? So we see that after Jesus, after he set the example, that example was followed on. Teaching happened in the church in Jerusalem, Teaching happened in the church in Antioch. Eventually, Paul and Barnabas came by. Now, Paul was studied under Gamaliel. He was a learned man. So he also taught. Remember Aquila and Priscilla? They were also uh, very learned. Like they, were, uh, they had become believers. They were tent makers, but they were very uh, effective in teaching. And so they also taught the church in Corinth. They met Apollos. You know, they, they taught to Apollos. Now, Apollos was believing only in the baptism of repentance. So they went, they taught him. They made him say, okay, Apollos, see, Jesus came. He died. And there's now there's the water baptism. You'll be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Apollos understood it. And he became a great leader in the church in Corinth. Right? So we see that the whole example of teaching continued on. Apollos raised up many teachers within the church in Corinth, right? And then again, Apostle Paul and uh, other disciples as well. I'm sure this whole aspect of the ministry of teaching continued to grow, continued to develop, right? Because without teaching uh, and only preaching, it's it's not going to do the purpose uh, or serve the purpose of touching people's lives, right? So teaching was very important. Uh, and we also see that Jesus himself said he, he taught and he preached. Right? So, okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians 4.17. 1 Corinthians 4.17. First Corinthians 4.17. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Mm. Thank you, Zeli. So just a background of what's happening here. It's very interesting. First Corinthians, Paul gets a letter with all the problems in the church. There is division. One is saying Paul, one is saying Apollos. One is saying uh, Cephas, and there's one is division. Two is there, uh, you know, there's there's too much of confusion within the church. They are not following the rules in, in the way to behave in the church. Wonderful church, the church which is already flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. 
all the gifts of the Spirit was flowing in the church in Corinth. Now Paul is saying, I'm sending Timothy to come there and teach you what I've been teaching everyone else. You see that? You see how important it is? And as I said, right, the church in Corinth was flowing in all the gifts of the Spirit. Right? But he still says, I'll send Timothy. He will come and teach you how to behave. One is saying Paul, one is saying Apollos. Now, what is this happening here? Right? You guys need some teaching. And then he goes on in uh, First Corinthians chapter. Uh, if you go uh, chapter five onwards, also you'll see that he five six. He he goes on to say, uh, "Who gives the gift? It is God who gives the gifts." So it's neither Paul, it's neither Apollos. And then I think chapter five he says, uh, "One puts the seed, another uh, what is it? But it is God who makes it grow." So Paul is even in his writing, he's teaching them to help them understand. Hey, it's not about a person. Maybe uh, I put the seed, Apollos watered it, but it is God who makes it grow. So who's more important? It's God. right? So he was trying to make them understand. This is a classic example of how you and I must be in ministry. We can come to a place of even teaching people, but if we are not following it, it's not going to be effective. right? Classic example, we may be flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's wonderful. But if we don't have the right understanding of the scriptures, we may fall into error. Right? So we one thing about teaching is we must also learn to be teachable. Right? Now, in ministry, maybe, you know, uh, as they're growing, will be 10 years, 15 years in the ministry. Sometimes we come to a place where we just shut off everybody else. I know everything, right? And that's a dangerous place to be in. We must step out of that zone, right? We must always, as good teachers, as good leaders, we must be willing to be teachable, right? There will, there's, there's a saying, right? We are just a drop in the ocean. We may know many things, but there's so much more to learn, right? Uh, so be teachable. Right. Let's look at a few instructions for you and I as teachers. Now, is there anybody here who, uh, I know that uh, there was one of them last week who mentioned that he's a teacher. I think it was Lubega. Uh, but is there anybody else here who you feel you've called to be a teacher? And you want to teach, right? It could be in the in uh, you know in the corporate sector it could be in a school or college or it could even be you know uh, uh, the ministry of you know teaching the word of God uh, you feel that God has called you to particularly teach you just know that I want to teach uh, is there anyone here uh, okay Anita says go with her okay okay anybody else uh, you feel you no, it could also be children's church, right? Uh, don't feel children's church is something very, you know, small. No, it's not. I mean, you, it's a very, very important uh, role. Children's church, it's very, very important. You're raising up the next generation. Anybody who you feel you, you know, you want to do it, you want to just be a good teacher, and you feel that's what you're called to do. Okay. Nobody else? Okay. All of them want to be pastors and worship leaders. All right. That's nice. Okay. Let's look at a few instructions on how you and I can be good teachers. Now, I'm sharing this not that I have become like, you know, uh, I've fulfilled all these criteria of becoming a good teacher. No. Uh, of course, we are also learning. We are also learning how to develop ourselves and grow as a teacher. Uh, you know, it's been 10 years that I'm teaching, but there's so much more to learn, right? There's so much more that I can improve. And and so this is also for me, right? We're all learning together. So a couple of instructions here. First one, the teaching believer, Romans chapter 12 and verse 7. Go ahead. Anybody can read Romans 12, 7 and 
anyone else can also read Colossians 3.16. Romans 12, 7. Romans chapter 12, verse 7. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. Right. So Paul is writing to the church and he's giving them some instructions. He's saying, whatever you're doing in the church, do it faithfully. If it is serving, let him serve. If he's teaching, let him teach. Colossians 3, 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonition one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Sally. Let the word of God dwell richly in each of you, teaching and admonishing each other. Now, who is Paul writing to? He's not writing to one person. He's writing to the entire church. The church in Colossae, uh, of course, uh, Epaphras has taken the letter, he's there, but he's, it's, it's written to the entire church. He's saying, let the word of Christ dwell richly in each one of you. Right? It is, this letter is not a personal letter uh, to the Colossians. It is to the church. I mean, the Romans, it's to the church, right? So Paul is saying, let the word of Christ dwell richly in each one of you so that each of you could teach and admonish one another in spiritual songs and hymns and all of that, right? So as a believer, this is very important, as a believer, the reason I asked you this question is, uh, how many of you are called to teach? It's because I'm getting to this point. As a believer, each one of us must teach the Word of God. You may say, okay, uh, what pastor, I don't know. I don't know much of the Word. Prepare, learn, develop, grow, be willing to study, be willing to learn, be willing to teach. Right? Uh, now, for example, you may say, you know, uh, I, I don't want to learn about Old Testament, right? Now, you have two choices. One, you can say, okay, let me learn only New Testament, right? Or you can say, hey, I want to learn. I want to understand it so that I can, you know, be able to teach the word to people in the right way, right? Uh, you know, what, is, what does Paul say? Preach the word, preach the word in season and out of season. Then he also says in in Second Timothy, he says, preach the full word of God. Don't dilute it. Right? When you're teaching, teach the whole thing. Right? And so, each one of us have, as believers have this responsibility to teach. Right? Whether we are an evangelist, right? Say for example, you're ministering to a person from another faith you have to be able to teach he will he or she will come and sit and say okay tell me how is this what do you have to do you have to teach you have to tell them so this is what it is this is what the scripture says right or maybe a believer comes up to you and says hey you know what uh, i want to know about this whole thing of rapture and second coming things are you know, some people are saying that you know this person is the antichrist, or the antichrist is not going to come only after. So you should be able to teach. You don't direct them to the pastor. Go to the pastor; he'll explain to you. No, no. As a believer, you must be equipped enough to be able to teach them. Right. And so it's wonderful that you have joined Bible College. This is a step where you're learning, and it's important that this learning is developed. Right. Don't, you know, after the course, don't take your books and keep it aside and say, okay, I've finished my two years course. No. Right. The book that I'm using right now is the book, I mean, the, the notes that I'm using right now is the same book I used 10 years back. I still have it. I still make notes on it. I still change it. Right. Because 
Revelation is progressive. We keep learning, we keep growing. Right? So as believers, we all are teachers. Let's get that into our spirit. And we all will, will get an opportunity. Uh, maybe it's 10 people, maybe it's 1,000 people, maybe it's one person. We will get an opportunity to teach. And we must do it effectively. Second one, the ministry gift of teaching. Now, Ephesians 4.11, we know that uh, Paul writes about the gift of the Spirit. Let's read 1 Corinthians 12.28. See what he says there. 1 Corinthians 12.28. Go ahead. Anybody can read. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then worker of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with the gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. So the Apostle Paul here is giving a list to the Corinthian church. Now, why is he giving this list? Because one, we know there was a division. Right? He goes on later on and he says, uh, we are all one body, right? Can the hand tell the leg? It goes on there, you know, we don't need you uh, and all of that. No. So he mentions here the ministry gift. All of us, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit comes with this gift of teaching of, as well, right? And we are called to use this ministry gift. Now, Look, for example, right? Maybe uh, just an example. Uh, um, maybe some of us are called to be a worship leader. You love to worship. Say, God, thank you. You've called me to be a worship leader. I will lead the worship. Wonderful. You're leading worship. Then a time comes, you have to write songs. What are you going to do? How will we write songs? First of all, we must know the word. Right? Yes, the Holy Spirit gives us song, but we must know, no, what's in the Word. What, what we should write songs that are from the Word of God. Right, and then there'll come a time and say, okay, whatever you've been learning in worship and you've been doing it on stage, go and teach other people. Teach this group of ten people. How will we do it? We can't say, okay, so when you're going on stage, you know, be careful, don't trip over the wires. Then when you start off, start with prayer, end with prayer. Keep one eye open to see whether the church is you know, worshipping. You can't say all those things. You need to teach them about worship. What is worship? Right? And the Old Testament, there are plenty of examples of what worship is. Right? With those Hebrew words. So, raising of hands in the Old Testament. You know? Uh, let us raise our hands, let us clap our hands, you know, and worship the Lord. The psalmist also writes, he says, the trees of the field will clap their hands. So now you're teaching the people, saying, hey, it's okay to raise your hands. You don't have to be shy and raise one small hand up. You can raise your hands. You're teaching them. You don't have to, you know, clap, looking whether others are clapping, only then I will clap. No. So when we teach these things, now what is your calling? Worship leader. But what are you doing? You're bringing your experience and you're teaching it to people. Right? So you must know these things. But if you're, for example, you are an evangelist or you are a prophet, you feel you're called in a prophetic ministry, you must be able to develop the ability to teach people how to share the gospel one on one and you must develop the ability to teach them how to flow in the prophetic of course the prophetic is something that god gives us god speaking to us but we can teach them how to hear from god how to develop that gift right so there's a ministry gift we can all grow in that Next point, very, very, very important. I've, I've underlined it here. 
and I always, I always, you know, emphasize on this. I put this on my in my house as well. I put it on, you know, the, the cupboards. Do and then teach. Right? Because if I only teach and don't do, it's not going to be effective. Nobody's going to take it. Let's read Matthew 5, 19. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19. Yes, anybody can read Matthew 5, 19. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. Whoever teach, practices these things and then teaches them shall be great, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Let's read Romans 2.21 and then I'll just share my thoughts on this. Romans 2.21. Yes. Romans chapter 2 and verse 21. Romans chapter 2 verse 21. You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? Amen. Thank you, Jafina. So, so we see here, one is Jesus saying, you know, if you do and then teach, you shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. And now Paul is writing to the Romans and he's saying, you who teach, will you not do it yourself? There is power when we do and then teach if i am teaching for example i'm teaching somebody about building godly character right what must i do i must be building godly character in my life right i must work on it i can't say you do first now i can teach that but it's not going to be effective if I myself am not doing it. Or if I'm talking about prayer, I say, everyone, you should pray. Prayer, you know, we're teaching about prayer. We say, God is God who answers prayers. And you keep fervently praying. Elijah prayed fervently. God answered his prayers. So when we pray, we pray fervently. Pray with faith. Right? Wake up. Take time. Prayer is a sacrifice. Now, if I'm teaching all of this about prayer, and I myself am not praying. What is it? It's just going to go into people. Of course, thankfully, it's the word of God, so the Holy Spirit will work. But it will be like I myself am disqualified of what I'm teaching. That's why Apostle Paul says, no, I'm running this race. I don't want to be disqualified from what I myself am preaching. Right? So. Very important thing, very important in ministry. First, do and then teach. It could be the smallest of things, right? It could be even the task of cleaning the table. Only if I've done it, then I can tell people around me, hey, why don't you, you know, volunteer and serving? Because when you serve, your, you know, God is going to bless you. I don't do volunteer and serving. They'll say, oh. if they, if your church member have seen you doing it, they will come and do it. You just have to give them a little word, right? You just tell them, hey, God will bless you. You know, when you serve, even the smallest of areas, God will bless you. You're just teaching them. You're telling them, be good stewards of what God has given you. What is it you're doing? Then you, and then you're teaching, and they will take it. Right, for two years straight, every Sunday, I swept and mopped the entire church in Mangalore, and they saw it. But I also used to teach them, 
eventually they themselves started coming right now this is just a small example but there are many things that we must teach first do and then teach imagine we're talking about forgiveness and we have unforgiveness in the heart and we're teaching others to forgive it does not make sense right it's like you telling others you do what i am not doing right? so in ministry do and then teach then you'll see the power of god there's anointing in that have you ever noticed at times and you know we may be teaching something and and you know we feel that hey uh, i've already not done it right and, and you feel that hey why am i teaching this or why am i preaching this when i myself have not done it nine out of ten times that's not going to be i mean the, of course this god's word god will do his work but it is not going to bring a lot of fruit right because we're just talking out of our mouth we are not we have not gone through it we've not done it and then teaching it to other people right so jesus himself said you do then you teach you will be great in heaven simple what did jesus do Jesus didn't sit under the bamboo tree and say, okay, you go and evangelize. I did a couple for one year. I did some ministry. You'd go and do the same thing. He didn't do that. He kept doing, he kept teaching them. And he told them, this is how you do. That is why thousands of years later also, his name is being preached and taught. There's power in that, right? Do not teach the commandments of men matthew chapter 15 and verse 9 matthew 15 verse 9 yes anybody can please read matthew 15 verse 9 and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines commandments of me Thank you, Rosalind. And in vain, they they worship me. And what does that verse say again? Can you repeat that, please? And in vain, they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Mm. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Now, here... Jesus is saying they are teaching as if they are teaching the doctrines of men as if they are commandments. Right? So, what is he trying to prove here? Jesus is trying to say that it is not what man made ideas and ideologies we are to teach. We are to teach. The principles of God. Right now, let me give you this example. And this is a really funny one, but uh, after this example, we'll take a break. I remember this. Uh, the example was this, this preacher was preaching. And in his message, it was, a, uh, it was the, uh, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm just trying to uh, think. Uh, I remember reading it. I'm just trying to process my thoughts here. The parable of the Good Samaritan, where the man comes on a donkey, and uh, finally, first the Pharisees and the other people, you know, reject this Samaritan, but the man uh, comes on a donkey, and he, the Samaritan, comes on the donkey, and helps this poor uh, man who's beaten and bruised uh, on the road. Everything sounded good, but I, I don't know if it was a book or whether I heard it, but uh, I know that this is what was portrayed. So the, the preacher was trying to say that the Samaritan was Jesus, or the Samaritans were believers like you and me, and the donkey was the church. So God uses the donkey the church to put take the sick people put them on them and takes them to the inn which is like god's kingdom completely wrong teaching 
but it was commandments of men uh, and put across the wrong way, right? So we must be very careful. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll continue on this side. Thank you. Ten minutes break.